Greetings. I'm Dr. Milk Spasm, MD. You will address me as such. For decades now, I've been the leading world expert in the field of giant monsters all-out attack. I got my PhD in silly rubber suits with a minor in broken pagoda studies. You might know me from my seminal work with ineffectual missiles. I've even spent a summer on tour as the roadie for the Mothra twins. As I grow older and wiser, I now reflect on Big Monster with the eyes of the only true authority in the field. I feel it's the right thing to do to honor you guys today with my expertise. Now, I will give to the world the definitive Big Monster tier list. While at the same time, I will be answering the most mysterious and prescient questions posed on Google's suggested searches. No longer will an unknowing public unknow. With this masterpiece, I am ready to take my place in the pantheon of Kaiju Academia. Now, without further ado, let's start with a classic. Nami. When you're talking about kaijus, this iconic Godzilla monster always gets brought up. The one, the only, Okandoru! Large Condor from Ibora, Horror of the Deep, 1966. Man, you do not want to fuck with this guy. It just shows the fuck up out of nowhere, pecks the fuck out of Godzilla. The movie never explains why there's a giant bird on this island or why it has beef with Godzilla, but it does explain that it's vulnerable to getting blasted in the face. There wasn't a lot from him under three minutes in one movie, but there was enough of him to peck his way into the history books. Large Condor gets the B tier. Mother of Ultra. Fashion fucking icon. You could only wish, loser. Such fucking grace, such fucking taste. And she has the ability of Mother Shower, a shower of energy which revives the dead. Interesting. She doesn't just kick your teeth in, but she'll style on a motherfucker as well. With a certified beefcake on her arm, they're just so supportive of each other in like a really stable way. They're, they're, just, they're just so cute together. A fun piece of trivia about her, like her son, Mother of Ultra usually shouts her attacks before using it. So that's good to know. God, she's just someone I really aspire to be. What more could you want out of a hero? What more could you ask for an idol? Mother of Ultra gets the first S tier. What is Godzilla's beam called? What is Godzilla's beam called? Well, some have called it a heat ray. The most common term used would be atomic breath, uh, but the official name in Toho canon was Blasteroni. King Kong. I, I just couldn't find this movie. Everyone keeps telling me that the old King Kong movie is a classic, but like, no one had a copy of this thing? There's been two remakes, one starring Jack Black as King Kong, but I don't want to watch a comedy, and there was one from the 70s, but Grandma says she won't let me watch it because that movie was for preverts. So if you have this movie, shoot me a kick, alright? Kick, kick me a bit, shoot. Wait, hold on, there's two of these movies? And they're both lost? Fuck me. I guess since King Kong is so forgotten, I'm just gonna have to put King Kong on F tier. Okay, sure. King Kong gets the F. Ella King. So the production company behind Ultraman reused a bunch of leftover props from Big Toho Productions, including the original Godzilla. This is arguably one of the most famous examples on how lazy and cheap the production could be. I mean, it's just a Godzilla suit without the skin. They literally just threw a pair of horns on top of the head and called it a day. The best part about Ella King to me is it became one of Ultraman's iconic villains. So like 50 years later, every new production of Ultraman is stuck trying to make this objectively silly thing look cool or threatening in any way. It's kind of like a Dalek. Please, 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 someone make me and send me a plushy Baby Ella King. Baby Ella King alone makes this thing an A tier. 
The Cloverfield Monster. The monster is an underwater life form that appears in Cloverfield and Cloverfield. Kishin? Kishin. For a short time, it really felt like this monster was like one of the biggest stars in Hollywood. It was just so creepy, just one of those wretched creatures that just makes your skin crawl. It was just so gross and disgusting. Props to whatever special effects guy made that monster. And of course I'm talking about TJ Miller. TJ Miller gets an F. The Undersea Humanoid Raggin. Originally from Ultra Q, the production crew invented a new piece of technology that would make a creature from the Black Lagoon costume's eyes more vacant. They do get added points for adding breasts to the Mother Raggin. Other than it looking fucking stupid and making no fucking sense, how else was I gonna figure out she was the mommy if she wasn't clearly a lady? The Undersea Humanoid Raggin gets a B. <laughs> there, there's that uh, part at the end of the episode where... The mom was walking up to that crowd of guys to get her baby back. It just hatched, and it's like a tiny little rag and puppet just wiggling. <laughs> and she picks up the baby. I, there's like a beat where I was just hoping that the mom would just bite the head off of the baby and everyone just go fucking nuts. <laughs> Baragon. The first of the Chonky Boys. Does anyone remember the world's ugliest dog? It's like if you took that boy and got him all mixed up with Zool from Ghostbusters. Very nice. Very nice. A tier. Gappa. I drew a bitch in pterodactyl when I was five years old, and now me and that dino go on adventures sometimes when I can afford mushrooms. Gappa, let the gods of the earthquake smile on your behalf. You will return to the island again, Gappa. Gappa will be angry no more. S tier. Skull Gomera. In human form, the emo boys have some busted ass nails. I am sorry, my chemical one direction. If you want to come for the fucking queen, your look has to be impeccable. Thank you, sirs. But next, please. D tier for double coat next time. Okay. Why is it called Shin Godzilla? I know, right? The Shins weren't even that godlike in that movie. Reptilicus. A decoration from a medieval themed mini golf course got struck by lightning and came to life. Now it's terrifying beachgoers by spitting acid and wiggling its neck in aggression. B tier. Batra. Fuck yeah, do metal Mothra. It's like the wasp version of the It Spider from the TV movie. Batra was originally meant to be an evil twin of Mothra called Gigamoth in the scrapped film Godzilla vs. Gigamoth. So, uh... Gigamoth, like a, like a big moth. It's like a big moth, Gigamoth. Like, yeah, got it, got it. Uh, some good shit right there. B tier. Pigmon. Little Pigman dunks on the haters with the flippy dippy needle arms. Oh yeah, Pigman gets deep in that A. Fucking hell, why don't I make this list like mostly Ultraman Kaiju? Gigan. Big hook hands. Star Trek visor. Big old fishy fins. You can say what you want about Gigan, but there is literally no way to imagine this guy taking a piss that is not fucking hilarious. A tier. The murderous Dakugara. This looks like a Mothra cosplay gone wrong or horribly right, depending on the convention you're going to. According to his wiki, his wings grant him flight and could release poison scales, while his proboscis could be used as a weapon and he could disguise himself as any human. So, <laughs> so watch out, my dudes. The murderous Dakugara can be disguised as any one of you. Watch out for poisonous scales. D tier. Big Man Japan. If you haven't seen Big Man Japan yet, then I am sorry this video is not for you. Big Man Japan gets S tier. Varen the Unbelievable. Varen the Unbelievable. Varen the Unbelievable. Look at this guy. I don't believe it. C tier. Varen. 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 Look at this guy. I can believe it.
B tier. Reptar. See, I don't actually know much about Reptar. I've never seen one of his movies or eaten any of his cereal. So instead, I'll be judging Reptar on his roller coaster in Australia. Someone recreated in Roller Coaster Tycoon 3. <clears throat> this video is called Runaway Reptar Roller Coaster Dream World Recreation, and it's done by Jordan. Hey, Jordan. Everyone say hi to Jordan. Now, Jordan, let me just start out by saying this is exquisite. This video is just so evocative. You were looking to capture the feeling of a roller coaster, and this is just downright inspiring. The way all of the trees match doesn't weirdly trigger my anxiety for some reason. I would say that if there's any drawbacks, the quality leaves some room for improvement. The highest capture is 240p, which is understandable with the time frame of the upload, which was 2011. But it's hard to criticize when the video description reads, Sorry, bad quality, dot dot. The Runaway Reptar is a part of Nick Central at Dreamworld Australia. It sits about 14 meters high and reaches the top speed of 40 plus kilometers. There are about two or three other Runaway Reptars around the world. There is also a roller coaster at Movie World called Roadrunner Roller Coaster, which is almost the exact same as Runaway Reptar, except Runaway Reptar Roller Coaster is inverted. All I've got to say is there's no problem at all, hombre. If you keep pumping out the hits like this, then you could totally go pro on RCT3 roller coaster recreations. I commend you, Jordan. As they say in Australia, gore blimey, governor. I'm here to fuck spiders and sheilas. Dog's breakfast. Reptar Runway gets the A tier. Also, have you ever seen The Lonely Space Fixins? That's a good fucking movie. King Joe. TV man has psychedelic nipples. I love his weirdo gun arm, but his pelvis nubbins makes me uncomfortable. B tier. Super Inframan. He was the Shaw Brothers ripoff of Ultraman. The Shaw Brothers known for their kung fu martial arts movies. Ultraman is a fine TV show, but I would say that most of the fight choreography I would describe as high kicks and posing. Shaw Brothers productions, on the other hand, would just hire acrobats. As a result, this movie is like 60% flips, and I am here for that. Kung Fu Ultraman gets an A. Yongari. Fun fact. The 2001 Yongari remake is the only good kaiju movie. Fight me, fucking nerds. Yongari takes the S tier. <laughs> is Godzilla a god? Nope, it's a Zilla. Tarantula! Yep, that, that is one big old tarantula. Don't know what I was expecting, but... I guess I can't blame a motherfucker for doing exactly what it says on the tin. F tier. Da 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 is the lost Yo Gabba Gabba cast member. It's like if a sock monkey got scanned into Tron. Fun fact about this race of aliens, their skin is harvested to make the mazes on the back of kid menus. Da da. I mean, out of all of the avant-garde to theme a silly rubber monster off of, I guess it's better than Cubo Futurism. D tier. The El Adrel 4 entity from Star Trek The Next Generation. Huh. Darmok and Gelada Tanagra? More like Ghost Triceratops. Ha! <laughs> Fucking got him! <clears throat> uh, B. King Caesar. Salacious Crumb had a beefy glow up. I'm proud of him. It's always like an awesome relief seeing an actor from the 80s doing well. God, my heart broke when I saw those pictures of the guy who played Hoggle from Labyrinth. I hear they're doing better now. They're on the road to recovery. Get well, my friend. Awe. Gotta stay true to King Kaisar and give this boy a B. Guanji. Valley of the Guanji is the movie where a bunch of cowboys fought a big old claymation dinosaur. Yep. I'll go ahead and nudge that one up in the nest here for you. Destroya. A monster so edgy you could get a paper cut. 
God, it's just like everything about this monster desperately wants you to know it fucks. But it just looks like a live action version of the big devil from Fantasia. Honestly, I can't decide whether or not this is the lamest thing I've ever seen in my entire life or it's so lame that it's kind of cool. Eh, fuck it, A tier. Is Mothra Godzilla's girlfriend? <sighs> no, fucking idiot. Mothra is Godzilla's fiance. Yeti of the 20th century. It's a Giallo Kaiju movie. A Giallo Kaiju movie you never knew you needed. Italian Giallo films have been, shall you say, known for their distinct lack of safety precautions during stunts. But usually those movies were about murder mysteries and not big monster attacks. For this movie though, I just got the sense that the filmmakers put these actors in real dangerous scenarios. This is some intense looking stunt work. There are just some shots in this movie that had me white knuckled through the entire thing. Because I, it seemed like someone was actually going to get hurt. I do have one major problem other than worker safety. This is not a fucking Yeti. This is not a fucking Yeti. It's a big old caveman. A big old caveman who just can't stop screaming. Sir, S sir. Sir, can you please lower your voice? Sir, there is no need to yell. Sir, sir. C tier. Yeti! The Gargantuas from that one time they warred together. Those costumes look like they smell awful. I try to not notice how bad a lot of these monster costumes would have to smell in real life, but come on, I fished that thing out of my drain this morning and threw it out. C tier. The Giant Claw. He is my little turkey baby, and he's my friend. I put little hats on my little turkey baby. <clears throat> uh, uh, S, S tier. Ace Killer! OG, oh, the Wheat Strain. Eh, I feel like it's tried way too hard. <sighs> C tier. The Toho Frankenstein. After the atomic bombs which destroyed Hiroshima irradiated his immortal heart, it slowly regrew into a feral boy, and eventually into a giant. Frankenstein became an outcast, blamed for the crimes of the underground monster Baragon and hunted by the JSDF. God, I want to pitch this movie to Mary Shelley as a follow-up to the actual modern Prometheus. Like, Frankenstein Sr. goes down in the fire, actual Frankenstein's heart survives, and eventually gets nuked by the US, causing it to regrow into a giant, who then gets framed for a bunch of monster attacks and has to clear his name while taking down a big old chonky boy. Come on. How, how could she say no to this movie? Big Ass Frankenstein takes the S tier. Jamila! God damn, if this ain't the happiest thwomp out there. I know he's supposed to be a rock man and everything, but I just can't stop thinking, fuck me, he looks like a comfy ass pillow. Gonna, gonna give him a couple of Z's tier. Like a snore. A tier? The monster that challenged the world! Centipede Daddy teaches me all the wrong lessons. Those eyes. I see him when I see true darkness.
We've met many times before, but it will always be the first. Keep me close, centipede daddy. The monster that challenged the world is also the monster that challenged my heart. S tier. The 6000 SUX. The car from that one fake commercial from Robot Cop, the movie. In the Robot Cop future, the cars will still look like cheap ass lemons from the 70s. This car is big. But it's still not big enough. The actor playing the Robot Cop is still gonna have to drive pantsless. Gonna go put that car in the C tier. C for car. Hanuman. Hanuman is a Hindu god and divine Vanara companion of the god Rama. Also, for some reason, Hanuman teamed up with Ultra 7 for a movie. Man, I just feel like it would be such an honor to meet a figure that is worshipped by so many like Mother of Ultra. That must have been a big day for Hanuman. S tier. Sting of death! Jellyfish Man is by far the worst guy to invite to your swinging beachside party. He'll just always keep tripping over his little swimmy flipper feet. Though I will admit his cave looks like a chill ass hangout. I'm just saying. Early morning underwater espresso bar. Just think about it. B tier. What is the most dangerous Godzilla? Well, some people think it's Godzilla, but I personally think it's Godzilla. Gabara! I mean, it always makes me really uncomfortable when a person wears a wig out of desperation. Hair can be a really fun thing to play around with, and there's something even more fun about playing with the artificiality of it all. But I've known a few friendos who've wrapped their entire self-worth in their confidence in something as dumb as pretending that they aren't bald. And it's just like, I'm sorry to call you out, Gabra, but we all know, and it's fine. We... We all won't be young forever, and it's fine. We'll love you no matter what. My love for you, Gabara, will always be S tier, but if I'm honest, you're pretty D tier. The Giant Behemoth. England sucks at giant monsters. I'll just say it, I'll just say it. England sucks at giant monsters. Hey, you ever notice England that you can't do kaijus too good? It's like Europe in general. Like, get fucked, Nessie. Like, from the bottom of my heart. I do not have time or the emotional vulnerability for some wet ass dinosaurs. I have been hurt too many times before. F tier. F tier, great behemoth. F tier. Did Godzilla kill Zeus? Did Godzilla kill Zeus? Uh oh, it's like a. It's like a comic book thing. Okay. Yeah, um... Why the fuck was this not in God of War? Jesus. Godzilla of War. Angerous. Chunky boy too spiky. B tier. The Smog Monster. Or Hedra if you're nasty. Guys, I think my copy of Majora's Mask is melting. So if Godzilla's a metaphor for nuclear weapons, what do you think the Smog Monster's a representation of? I'm tired of smelling this stinky ass bitch. Someone call Captain Planet to take the trash out. F tier. Same Kojita. This chunky boy is a tick. Just a, just a big old fucking tick. But soon his tickly ways are ended when Ultraman Taro snaps that motherfucker's nose off with his knee. Jesus. Yeah, for those who don't know, Ultra 7 fights dirty. Ultra 7 fights like they're in fucking prison. Uh, C, I guess. Colo Clawfish. The Colo Clawfish is the best Star Wars fish, hands down. C tier. The OPC Killer. Wait. The OPC Killer is the best Star Wars fish, hands down. B tier. Sando Aqua Monster. Wait, wait, wait. No, the Sando Aqua Monster is the best Star Wars fish, hands down. Definitely the kind of fish I want painted on my space van. A tier. But why are you created a monster and they
they call him Frankenstein. And the terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. According to the NIAA, an estimated 95,000 people die a year from alcohol-related causes. And there's this toxic culture around masculinity that just causes men to die at a higher rate than women. Substance abuse runs in my family, so I have this real feeling of dread. It's, it's like a weight on my chest that I have this potential. If I can't keep self-control, then one day my kids could see me with the same sense of sadness I would feel when I saw the men in my life succumb to this medical problem. Budweiser, you created a monster. And let's give that monster a D for Drakenstein! Dad, act the porno. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next, next up, we got the uh, we got uh, some of that pterodactyl porno. You know, you know that uh, you know that porno stuff that folks are talking about these days. It's kind of like that, but it's the uh, it's the pterodactyls doing the old Jimmy Jam. Yeah, pretty hot, isn't it? Pterodactyl porno, C tier, C for climax. Biolante. Oh yeah, now this is some hardcore kaiju work right here. Mix an alligator, a houseplant, and a level boss's weak spot all into one and have it fight an atomic lizard. Now that's, that's kaiju, baby. That's kaiju. A tier. Blood Freak. Herschel gets a job at a local turkey farm where he meets two scientists who are experimenting by testing certain chemicals on turkey meat. Herschel agrees to participate in a test by eating some of the turkey meat to convince him to agree. The scientists bribe him with more marijuana. More marijuana? Stingy motherfuckers be holding out on me. After eating the whole turkey, he passes out on the farm. He suffers a seizure, and the two other scientists find him later. And, worried about being investigated, about the possible death of Herschel, they dump his body in the woodlands. But Herschel is not dead. He wakes up to find that he has a giant turkey's head in place of his own head. He's also still addicted to drugs, but instead of smoking marijuana, he now craves the blood of other addicts! L look at this turkey man. Just... drinking this turkey man. Enjoy the turkey man. You're welcome. You're welcome for showing you the turkey man. <laughs> Gubilla, the grooviest of the Chonky Boys. Long drill nose, perfect for drilling with your nose. This Chonky Boy gets a B tier. Rodan. Hot fucking garbage. Fuck Rodan. Fuck him in his little fucking Rodan face. F tier for fuck Rodan. He knows what he fucking did. Can Godzilla survive a nuke? Dude, Godzilla is a nuke. Black Scorpion. There is only one thing you need to know about Black Scorpion. This movie has one of my favorite scenes in film history. So the army's fighting Black Scorpion. They're using this electric harpoon to take the thing down. This fucking guy right fucking here misses his first shot. You missed. As he's bringing the wire back in, he decides it's a splendid goddamn idea I won't miss this time to grab the electric harpoon with his bare hands, accidentally offing himself in the process. The takeaway? Only fuckwits die like this. Don't be a fuckwit. That death gets an S tier. Godzilla says that I should learn to fight my own battles, you know. Ultraman Alien Lightning Round. Alien Guts. Salmon in a big power suit. D tier. Alien Knackle. Big furry nipple monster. F tier. Alien Metron. Vibrator set to attack mode. C tier. Alien Spell. Ew, what's with all the scabs? F tier. Alien Cool. Yeah, this boy can hang. A tier. Alien YL. Attack of the Killer Tree Stump. D tier. Alien Pit. <laughs> B tier. Alien Paralinga. Dog Vomit. F tier. Alien Chaplay. Hey, I own that microphone. A tier. Alien Vibe. I got vibe on it. B tier. Alien Hook. Ornamental Sphinx in a rain poncho. D tier. Alien Shrink. 
Surunk. Summon tape knives to this Komodo dragon. C tier. Alien Chaboo. Stress ball menstrual show. F tier. Alien Prot. Oh, he's ovulating. D tier. Alien Pega. It's the Donnie Darko rabbit during Pride. B tier. Alien Godola. My eyes are up here, sir. C tier. Alien Wild. Ew, this actor started a mold. F tier. Alien Baltan. But the Griffin Ultra Monster Personification Project version. I really appreciate the dedication to the claw game. Really appreciate that. A tier. F me, man. I'm I'm sitting here trying to write jokes about Ultraman. And and then I remember the time that Ultraman fought Pinocchio. And I'm just like, fuck, how can I be funnier than the actual Ultraman? The amazing colossal man. Big old adult baby. He's a man with a kink and that's just groovy. But seriously, get that face wound checked out, cause that is gonna get seriously fucking infected. He's just a big old diaper, baby. D tier. Gargantua. Gargantua and Pantagruel is a series of satirical French novels from the 16th century about a giant and his giant son. Throughout the series, more than one person drowns in piss. Pantagruel is remembered today for Pantagruelism, a form of stoicism defined as a certain gaiety of spirit confected in disdain for fortuitous things, while Gargantua is remembered by me for being chill to his bros and throwing fucking ragers. For that, Gargantua, you get the A tier. Who killed Godzilla's parents? Who killed Godzilla's parents? What the fuck? <laughs> it was a pagoda in Crime Alley. Now he's on a crime-fighting crusade to bring justice to pagodas everywhere. Oh, I'm Godzilla man. Han Zagrian. Definitely the chunky boy I feel the most empathy towards. I just feel so sorry for this guy. There's just no way those spikes don't make his entire everything hard to deal with. B tier. The Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. Now, this was a really fun idea, but it would get its marshmallow shit pushed in by like any movie kaiju. Like your standard movie kaiju can take at least a few missiles. Stay Puff got beat by four comedians with regular old portable nuclear accelerator systems. Like he probably couldn't take even a standard mother energy beam, let alone a whole mother destruction beam. Although I would have to say mother punching a giant marshmallow man would be so satisfying in that Instagram slime way. Those baby puffs can get fucked by the way. Sony, you're fucking hacks. Stay Puff gets the beat here. And Sony as a company goes in the fucking trash. The Reptile from Hammer's Reptile. The Reptile from from Hammer. Hammer Horror. The Reptile. God damn, that tongue action's killing me. Oi, legends call him Big Pokeball Eyes. I, I don't I don't know. Uh, e tier for eyes? Sure. King Buckle. I couldn't find any information on King Bockle, but I did find a clothing brand for gentlemen that sells authentic leather trousers called Bockladeer. Bockladeer. Look at that, they even got a nifty zipper for your butt. I'm assuming one of these fine gentlemen are actually King Bockle and not this TV creep. If this TV creep was King Bockle, then F tier. Ugh. Now, does Godzilla have a penis? Wow, this one is a pretty heated debate, actually. There's an entire Inverse article about this. They point out the Hinipino bulge, which is very common for male reptiles. I just personally don't get why there would be a debate over this. Godzilla has always been a woman. Jet Jaguar. <laughs> Jet fucking Jaguar. Oh, god damn. Here's this fucking loser. Maybe I'd fuck around with this nerd if they'd also introduce a mother of Jaguar. They couldn't even rip off the best parts of Ultraman. What a dork. I really hate Jet Jaguar. Jet Jaguar gets the A tier. All right, we are now down to our final five. These monsters. You know them. You love them. You've been probably waiting this whole video for me to rank them. These are the defining S-tier kaiju. I don't even really need to talk about them because they've just been talked to death at this point. I mean, what could you really add that hasn't been said before? So, without further ado,
The top five kaijus in movie history. Number five, Mechani Kong. Now that's a perfect robot ape. You cannot make a better robot ape design. Number four, Go God Man, best hair in the industry. Number three, Maguma. Gummy Walrus. Number two, Charles Barkley. Godzilla got busy getting that ass whooped. Number one. Bird on. It's Bird on. It's Bird on, everybody. All right, that should be every kaiju ever invented. Repeat, every kaiju ever invented. Don't subscribe. F*** you. Shag my friends tonight.